Welcome everyone to this latest episode of Jim and Java. I'm Jim Dempsey. Well, hello everyone. It's great to be with you. We are getting closer and closer to year end. And uh, as we approach year end, you're either winding down or you're as crazy as ever uh, with uh, responsibilities and duties. Uh, I know that even up to December 31st, many of you are receiving phone calls, emails, texts, and uh, meeting with your donors. So I'm not even assuming that uh, the last couple weeks, the week before Christmas, and certainly the week between Christmas and New Year's, that uh, it's going to be that much slower for you. And if you're a nonprofit leader like I am, I know that it's a busy time. So thank you for even taking the time today to watch this broadcast and uh, I just appreciate you so much. Thank you again for supporting this channel. If you're not currently subscribing, would love to have you as a subscriber for this channel and know that I'm here to be a resource for you, to help you, uh, to, of course, our slogan is to increase income and see that you're fully funded, but that's not just a slogan, it's the truth. I really want to help you just really double your income this year, especially at year end. So we're here for your questions if you've got them. Our question today, this week, is from Margaret in Portland, Oregon. And Margaret uh, says, Sometimes I feel as though I'm raising our entire budget alone. How do I incorporate other team members, especially at year end? Well, Margaret, thank you for those vulnerable and kind words. I know that it's not easy being a leader of a nonprofit, and uh, I know that the role and responsibility that you have is extremely important. Uh, and oftentimes, it is a lonely position, and you feel like you are the only one doing things for your organization. And I get that 100%. And so your question is a, is a great one. It really is important, Margaret, that you make sure that your entire team, whether that is your board members, and if you didn't watch my broadcast last week, how to incorporate your board members, I'll put that up above. But incorporating your board members is so important. They need to understand that they are co-owners of your organization and you want buy-in from them. You are actively involved, but they need to be part as well. But throughout your organization, whether it be your staff part-time, full-time, or even volunteers, those individuals need to understand that they are owners within the organization as well too. They need to understand that the role that they play is extremely important. I have a lot of colleagues, and I've done it myself as well, they've included their entire organization in calling donors at year-end. And it on one hand, it can seem a little risky because you're putting people on the phone who are um, who are nervous, who are afraid, who maybe haven't done this much and are only getting a little training from you. But it really gives people an idea of the magnitude, of the scope, of the role of responsibility that you play in ensuring the success of your organization. And that includes the fundraising aspect of things, recruiting the, the partners and recruiting the dollars. And so it's important that they get a handle for that and a handle on that. So I would look for ways to include them in the efforts that you're doing. And as I mentioned last week with board members, the same can be said with staff. Have them help you fold stuff, seal, stamp, mail your year-end letters, help them understand the importance of social media and maybe you can surface someone who becomes your social media manager and also get them as i said on the phone and maybe even some of them are willing to go on meetings with you i would always look at taking a strategy leader or program manager along on appointment with you it allows people to understand that there's other people in your organization and honestly i can tell you from my years of experience it is so important that our partners have multiple relationship with the staff it makes them better donors overall, better partners overall, when they have multiple relationships. If something happens, they're frustrated by a receptionist, they're frustrated by someone who's trying to answer their questions, they can always come back to, well, I know the executive director and the executive director is such a good, solid person. 
this may just be an outlier. So it really helps that you have multiple relationships with your donors. And this is a good way to pull those people into that. But getting them involved in the development efforts are so important. I've mentioned in many of my videos the importance of everyone in your organization seeing themselves as ambassadors in that organization. They represent you. So from the phone call, the receptionist uh, or administrative assistant or program manager who's answering the phones for you, each and every person is an ambassador. They're a representative. They should be able to speak on behalf of your organization. They should understand and be able to articulate clearly your mission, vision, and values. You could send them out to organizations. You could send them out to speak in churches. They all should have an understanding and be able to communicate about your organization and especially be able to communicate ways that people can partner. And that just, that can be money, but it also can be help to recruit additional volunteers. It can be helping to do small chores or be on an event committee. But there's a lot of ways that your staff and volunteers can recruit other staff and volunteers. So they just need to understand that this is not your organization, that it's their organization. They need to understand that together you all are co-owners in this organization and they need to understand just the importance of the role that they play and what a great way for you to love, appreciate, and value them. I've got a video that I've put out that addresses ways that you can thank and value your staff and your volunteers. I've linked that above and make sure that you get a chance to watch that. And so I hope, Margaret, that that helped you to understand, uh, but I get it. I really understand that sometimes you feel like you're standing alone out there when people don't respond to your emails and your texts and uh, you try and gather people together to do tasks and only few attend. I get it. I've been there. I'm with you. So I hope these uh, suggestions will help. Well. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be wrapping up this broadcast of Jim and Java. Uh, should you have questions, please reach out to me at DevFStrats on Twitter and use the hashtag Jim and Java. You can always comment below, leave a comment below for me, especially uh, let me know if you utilize your staff at all in the fundraising efforts and especially your board. And also, if you need to reach me on Instagram, you can do so. I'm out there at Dev Effectiveness Strategies. And you can also always reach me on my email at developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe. And I appreciate you so much and wish you the best at this year end. And as I always say, we're here to strive to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Take care. Have a great year end. Bye-bye.